one stays in the back of the court. Is Lance given the ball 26 times on the ground and four or five times in there? Um, I, I don't know, you know, what, what we had in terms of a number coming in, but we, you know, we, we held them out last week. You know, it was close, but we felt like we wanted to make sure that he was 100%. And, uh, you know, this is a big run we're about to go on. And you can just see the difference he makes when he's out there, the explosiveness, the speed. I thought he ran hard tonight. Um, and, he, and he's a weapon out of the backfield. You, know, you can see that down the sideline, um, boy, you know, the, the one that we just missed on the, uh, the touchdown there, you know, we, we had a linebacker out in the one-on-one, and you can see, I mean, it was one heck of a route he ran. We just didn't connect on it. We spent a bunch of time on that route. So, um, you know, that was like getting stabbed in the heart. But, but you can just see when he's out there, uh, the impact he's having on our offense. And um, you know, to get that run there in the fourth quarter was big. Over here to the right, Joe Nugent, WCMH. Had three turnovers and still win the game by two touchdowns. What went well? Uh, well, I, it started off, I think, with with a good combination of, of you know, um, you know, the run game, and you know, we did have some some you know pretty good you know passing plays as well. And I thought that combination was good. And um, I think you know we're all frustrated that we're just not able to you know finish off some of those drives. And you know when, when we get into those plus territories, you know we we just you know, we got to. We got to finish them off, and so there's a lot that goes with that. You know, certainly the coaching is a big part of it, um, but but again, um, you know, when you get a guy like Trey back, and then you have Marvin on the outside, you can see the difference it makes. Um, you know, we decided to hold the Mecca one more week. He was he was close, but um, you know, we just made the decision to hold him. You know, I, I, I do feel really confident we'll get him back next week, but um, you know, he makes a difference. But just some really tough uh, performances out there, like. Certainly, we can talk about the defense all night, but just offensively, you know, Cade and, and Julian, I mean, these guys, I mean, they were battling at the end. And, um, you know, you get to this time of year and you got a lot of bumps and bruises and things like that. And, um, you know, the guys played hard. I thought the offensive line got movement tonight. I thought so, you know, the tight ends. I mean, we, we did, we moved the line of scrimmage. And, um, and then again, having Trey back made a big difference, certainly, you know, run for 160 yards. Rob Waller, Columbus Dispatch. One more on Trey Bion. How frustrating is it? It sounds like you gain one. Yes. He's been kind of in and out really over his career. How, how challenging has that been? Is it good to see somebody who's maybe some people question him to come back and have a night like this? Well, the one thing about Trey is, like you said, you, you, can, um, you can do so much with him because he has such a great skill set. And uh, he, he's one of the more competitive guys we have. And so nobody wants to be out there more than him. And you can see when he's out there, he has that drive. Um, and. You know, he hadn't played a game in a couple, you know, uh, a few weeks, I guess now, and so even at the end, he was kind of he was he was toughing it out because he was he was a little winded there at the end. He hadn't you know rushed for that many, uh, had that many carries in a while, and then he had a couple of the receptions and a couple of routes. So, um, you know, I, I thought he handled it well, and you can see you know what a weapon he is when it, when it's when he's out there and he's at full go. So, um, you know, hopefully we have another great week of practice and we can keep doing those things, and then it just. Uh, puts more and more pressure on the defense when you have someone like Marvin. You get you know Julian out there and Cade, and so that that's the idea. And um, you know I still don't think we put a complete game together on offense, and so we'll get back to it this week and keep swinging. Uh, Tony Gerdman, Buckeye Huddle. Ryan, any update on Lathan? What you saw or what might be going on there? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't have a. I don't have an update actually. I mean, I don't. I'm not even sure exactly how it all shook out there. Uh, it was all kind of chaotic, um, so. We'll try to get you, you know, what we can here in a little while. Uh, gentlemen, next to Tony, did you have a question? Yes. Yeah. Just what does it say for Marvin? Though I mean, all the attention he gets from defenses to keep putting up this kind of production week in week. Yeah, it's, it's. I say it every week. It's, it's just tremendous. Um, I believe he's the best football player in the country. Um, you know, to have another, you know, a couple touchdowns and 120 yards, and I guess we targeted him 10 times. Um, you know, probably could have targeted him a few more. You know, we're always going to try to figure out ways to do that. Um, but, but he's a um, he's a dynamic player, and he keeps bringing it every week. And the consistency is starting to show more and more week in and week out. Just you know, the playmaking ability, and I mean, what a catch he made down there! My goodness, I mean, um, for him to get a foot inbounds and hang on to it, uh, you know, I was like, man, that, that's going to I don't know, that's going to be a hard one. And then when I saw the replay, I mean, it didn't move, and just the Unbelievable catch. Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. You mentioned guys who are banged up. How hurt is Kyle right now? And is that affecting him at all in meeting some of the mistakes that he saw? Uh, 
No, I, I think, um, you know, I think it's like, you know, bumps and bruises and things like that. And, you know, I think something maybe happened in the game there. And, you know, he was able to fight through it, which was great. And so we'll, we'll get him an evaluation. But I, I think, um, you know, he'll be fine. But, um, you know, I, I don't think that those things are, are you know, getting his way right now. But, um, but I thought he, 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 he toughed it out at the end, you know, and still hung in there. And, you know, when, when you do maybe, you know, have a couple of tough plays, you know, the easy thing to do is, or what mo most people do is, you know, they start to get gun shy, you know, and they, but, but he didn't do that. He kept swinging, he kept pushing. Uh, you could hear him on the sideline, you know, right before that last drive where Travion ran to make it a two score game. I mean, he was in that huddle getting after the guys and that he showed good leadership there. So, so I thought that was a positive. Uh, Tim May on yeah. three, Letterman row. Yeah, following up with that, uh, did you have a talk with Kyle at halftime though a little bit? Because he did seem off. I mean, both interceptions were, were odd. One should have looked like it should have been a throwaway, you know, things like that. What, what, did, what were your discussions like with him to kind of settle him down for more than anything else, Brian? Yeah, I usually don't get into the plays right after the game, but I, I have a pretty good feel of exactly what happened on both of them. I think he would tell you on the first one, it was just a bad decision. It was first down. Um, the play was designed to go to the tight end. The tight end got caught up, and it was not how we designed it, and the ball should have got thrown away. It was a bad decision. The second one, the corner came off on cover three, and, um, you know, I – you know, he, he's reading the flat defender, and that corner, he, he just came right off. I mean, he took a chance, and he made a nice play. I, I, don't, I don't really blame him for that play. I don't. I mean, there's going to be times where when you're pushing it down the field, things like that are going to happen. So um, I told him, hey, I, you know, I, I get it. You know, the corner came off. Let's just play the next play. Those, those plays are behind us. And, um, and so, you know, those are the conversations we had. But um, he, he knew right when he came off the field on the first one that he wanted that one back. So, um, you know. Good to, good to see him hang in there and keep playing hard. But, 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 the, but I think the other thing is just, that, you know, in general, you know, we get into a two-score or a one-score game. We're trying to make it a two-score game. We get around the 30-yard line. Like, we, ju we just we have to make sure we're in field goal range and give Jaden an opportunity. And two times, we didn't, we didn't do that. And so, you know, that, that was an opportunity that, that, was, that was missed. I was going to say, do you leave her a little frustrated like the last couple of games? You left points on the field. I mean, yeah. you know, Notre Dame, Penn State, you talk about that. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now we're going against good teams, and, and Luke does a great job. You know, I, I always want to make sure. You know, I, I don't do that enough. You know, it's just, you know, the, the teams we're playing are good teams. They're well coached. They have good players, and so you know, I don't want to sound flippant when I, you know I, I say we, we expect to score every time. These guys do a great job, and they had a good scheme, and, and they did a nice job with everything. The fans were really into it. It's a great environment. So, you know, we want to you know go on a road and be you know road, road warriors and, and win these games on the road. And it's not always going to be the way you want it, but. Uh, but yes, you know, you know what, what we want to get done. You know the expectation, and so um, still, still things we got to keep it, get better at. Awesome Ward rivals the podcast. It just felt like one after another guys were coming after. Zeke gets hooked down. Aiken comes out. Jack at one point. Becca didn't play. Julian comes up. A probably pretty good for the depth. But B, was there any sense you had that the third quarter maybe this is not our night? <laughs> no, you're not allowed to think like that. Um, you don't have a choice. You know, I always say we're in control of, of what we do. And, um, you know, this time of year, you know, we, we play physical brand of, of football and um, things like that are going to happen. Um, but but you know, most of those guys, you know, they get right back in the game after taking a shot, you know. And for those who have played football before, you know, it's, it's like having a, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you get leg whipped or something. It's like someone taking a Louisville slugger and smacking it into your shin. You know, it just, it hurts. And, you know, um, certainly, there's a difference between hurt and injured, and but our guys, man, they, they they battled, and you saw a bunch of guys just fighting at the end. They didn't want to come out of the game, um, so yeah, I think our team, um, you know, at halftime always has had a good look in their eye all year, you know, knowing that they want to come out and play really well in the fourth quarter, and you know, you're seeing us do that. I mean, we're playing well in the fourth quarter. I'd like to see us, uh, you know, even play better in, in the first half, but. Um, but we are finishing games where we're supposed to finish them. Um, well, we're finishing games. Um, I, I think there's ways that we can finish them better. But um, at, the, at the end of the day, the goal is to keep winning. And we got to keep doing that. And we know the challenges are going to keep getting bigger and bigger here down the stretch. Clay, all the SYX. Yeah, along those lines, Coach, some might say, hey, you passed three of your toughest four tests along the way. Would you caution people that the next three are not? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mentioned to the team as, as we were watching some games this afternoon, um, just watching some of the teams play at noon, then the 3.30 games. you got to bring it every week. 
and, and you know, you have one bad day and your season's ruined. You know, and, and it, the, the teams that we play are very good teams. They're well coached, and you know, winning is just not something that we're entitled to. We gotta, we gotta do it, and um, that's the competitive stamina that we talk about. You know, especially going on the road, these games are hard. We'll, we'll, the, the next one will be a battle next week against Rutgers. It will. It just, I think it's a noon kickoff, right, Jerry? Is it noon? Yes. yes. Yeah, it's a noon kickoff. I mean, you know, uh, Greg's doing a good job with those guys, so uh, battles. But, um, but, but the good thing is we're, 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 you know, we're getting battle tested as well. I think we're the more battles you you, you get into, you know, uh, the more poise you have because you have something to reference. You don't panic. But again, we're going to watch the film and. You know, throw coffee against the wall again, I'm sure. Okay. We have time for just one or two more for Coach. Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. You said you could talk about the defense all night. Yeah. What was the second game of the game? Just the ball, they went through the fourth quarter. Um, how much of the security blanket is it for you to have to know that you've got a defense that's going to be able to get out there? And is it, is there anything tonight that you, the defense has shown you that you maybe they had before? Yeah, I think they're in the second half when. Um, Wisconsin came out, scored. We came back, scored, um, and then um, the ball was. I think it was you know coming out, um, and then we ended up on like the ten yard line. We brought it to midfield, flipped the field, got it inside the ten, you know, and and you know usually it'd be like, well, we got to go for it, we got to score, and and so pooching the ball in, in those situations right now, you know, like you said, with a good defense, you feel like you know you got an opportunity to get the ball back. If it's a three and out, then you're going to get the ball at midfield. If it's a couple first downs, and you know you, you feel decent about those, and so, yeah, I think it's it, it's something where you got to get a feel during the game how it's going. But it starts with the run game. You know, if the run game, um, you know, is you know, if we're stopping the run, then you, know, you feel like you're in control of the game. And I think that was a big part coming into the game. We had to run the ball, stop the run, and show toughness. I think we did all three of those things. Big goal line stand at the end of the yeah, it was excellent. Again, just uh, you know, not giving up an inch with, with you know the ball on the one yard line. Just keep fighting and keep swinging and keep playing. The play Tommy made on the shovel was huge, you know. Um, but but our guys, you know, they, they played hard. They they rallied to the ball. Um, no, I mean I thought the secondary played well. They, they got their hands on some balls. Um, and that was another really good performance by our guys. Great, coach. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, folks, I'm gonna.